10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, Episode 123. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. So glad you are here and thank you so much for tuning in. If you've never listened to the show before, my name is Nick Manella and I am here to guide you through a short jazz lesson each and every week, complete with PDFs for every single episode. And I wanted to let you know how to grab those PDFs. If you head over to our website, 10minutejazzlesson.com, you can find a link to our Patreon site where you can get PDFs for every single episode that we've ever done, all 123 episodes for a small, I would even say tiny, donation every single month. You can get your hands on all of that stuff. Thank you so much to everybody who has chosen to support us with their hard-earned dollars every single month. Wanted to do a quick shout-out to some of the new patrons. Uh, I wanted to give a shout-out to Chris, Lex, Jeff, Bjorn, Peter, Ken, Sonia, and Kevin. Thank you so much for getting on the bandwagon, and I hope and I know that you're getting a ton out of all of those PDFs and that they're improving your playing and helping you to be a better musician each and every week. All right, let's jump into the episode for this week. This week is going to continue our discussion on practice drones. Last week, we talked about some kind of basic stuff and just talked about how drones can really be used effectively almost as a meditation kind of practice ritual, how they can really improve your ears and how they can really improve the tone on your instrument, not to mention your intonation and a whole host of other things that are really, really important when we play an instrument and when we play jazz. So what we're going to do in this episode, as we typically do in part twos, we are going to talk about something that's a little bit more advanced. Last week, we talked about, you know, playing a major scale, um, hearing some intervals, some diatonic intervals, some stuff like that. So this week, we're going to step outside of diatonicism, and we're going to take a look at some tensions, and we're really going to talk about how beneficial it can be to start to hear the typical tensions that we would use over some of the chords that we play over, over some of the chord progressions that we play over. Very uh, important tensions that are used all the time in the jazz language. So we're going to take a dominant chord and we're going to talk about some of the really typical tensions that we hear over that. And those tensions are flat 9, sharp 9, sharp 11, and flat 13. So if you think about an altered chord, an altered dominant chord, those are the acceptable tensions that are contained within that altered dominant chord. And the altered tensions, these tensions that I'm speaking about, are really the quintessential sound that you hear a lot of your favorite musicians using to make their solos and their vocabulary extremely interesting. So these would be really worthwhile things for us to concentrate on, learn how to hear, learn how to execute on our instrument, and then ultimately learn some of the larger structures that they fit into that are going to make us sound just really good and and make our solos just captivating. We all know that we have to use tension. I mean, tension and release is really what music is built on. Um, and any music that doesn't have that is not really going to leave you with a very satisfied feeling. So it would behoove us to really study this stuff and get into it on a very deep level. So if you look at your PDF, the first line is simply just holding these common tensions over the drone. So if you play a C drone and you start with D flat, and just playing a D flat over a C drone is going to be very, very uncomfortable at first because normally what we do is we want to move away from tension as soon as we start to hear it. That this is going to kind of get you comfortable with just hanging out on that tension and really being able to kind of accept what it sounds like. And I think one thing that we don't do 
is really learn how to get that tension in tune, really understand what it sounds like because we want to move away from it. So this is going to benefit you in a couple of different ways, but really what we're really trying to do is hear a flat nine and be able to identify that interval and be able to reproduce it on our instrument. So like I said in last episode, it would really be important for you to sing these first and then play them. So sing it, see if you can hear it, and then play it to check your accuracy. Singing a flat nine is way harder than playing it because you're gonna be especially uncomfortable trying to reproduce that tension with your voice. So here's what a flat nine sounds like over the drone. Kind of uncomfortable, isn't it? That's kind of the point. We want it to be uncomfortable because all these notes that I'm presenting to you today are going to be somewhat uncomfortable, some more than others. That's like probably the most uncomfortable one. Let's check out what a sharp nine sounds like over a drone. Now, that is just a minor third, right? So it's not all that tense, but you want to kind of try to hear it in the context of it being a sharp nine. So while I'm playing that note, I'm almost trying to hear the flat nine as well, because the sharp nine and the flat nine just go together really well. And most of the time you're going to use them in conjunction, especially when you're playing altered or something like that. So, you know, d try not to hear it as a minor third, even though it is. Try to hear it as that tension that's maybe leading down to the root by going sharp nine, flat nine, root. Okay. All right, let's check out the next one. This is sharp 11. That one's very, very commonly used in a bunch of different places. And then finally, we're gonna check out that flat 13. Here's what that sounds like. So there are your four most common tensions uh, the four things that would be really, really valuable for you to be able to hear and reproduce. So now what we want to do is we want to take it one step further, and we want to come up with some structures to play that use some of these tensions. So now what we're hearing is we're hearing different triads over this drone, not the diatonic root triad, but some very, very different tension-filled triads. And this is going to start us down the path of being able to hear different structures over a drone. This is super important. This is kind of it. If you could start to hear this stuff, you could start to play some very, very advanced material. So the first one we're going to do is a really common one. We're going to do basically a tritone substitution. So over a C drone, we're going to mess with a G flat triad. So the tensions that we are getting would be the flat nine and the sharp 11. Now the other note in the triad is the flat seven. I wouldn't really consider that too much of a tension, but... It's in the triad, so we're going to actually play it. So here is a G-flat triad over a C drone, otherwise known as tritone substitution. You can hear that those tensions, they all of a sudden take on a completely different flavor when they're actually involved in a structure that's happening. So that one's great. That's an awesome one to practice, and you'll actually start to hear things in a bit of a different way. Now, you'll notice I did it inverted so that I could actually start on the flat nine, uh, and that's just something I like to do when I'm working on certain tensions. I'll invert the triad. The next one that we're going to do is a major triad that's based off of that flat 13. So what we're doing is we're playing an A flat major triad over a C drone, and this is going to give us the flat 13, the root, and then it's going to give us the sharp nine in there. So this is an interesting one as well. This is one of my favorite ones to practice. I 
absolutely love the sound of that one. And then finally, the last one for this episode is going to be a D major triad over a C drone. And this is a really, really common triad to use over things like major seven chords or really anywhere that you hear it. And this one obviously is going to be using the sharp 11 as our tension. I also really love the sound of this one. Here's a D major triad over a C drone. I love the sound of that one as well. That's one that I use a lot in my everyday playing. So remember, the point of these is really to go slowly through them, check out the tension, check out the sound of these structures over the top of this drone. But then at the end of the day, what you want to kind of do is try to create some melodies over it. Um, and that's the really important part is once you can hear them, actually start applying them into your playing because at the end of the day, that's the goal for everything that we do, right? So I'm going to leave you with myself improvising a little bit over this C concert drone, going back and forth in between some of these tensions, doing some triad pair stuff, just so you can hear what I do kind of at the end of the day. So remember, if you want the PDF to this episode, make sure you jump on to Patreon by going to our website, 10 Minutes jazzlesson.com. We really appreciate everybody that is choosing to toss us a couple of bucks every every single month. That really helps us to keep the show coming at you on a regular basis. And remember, you can also get all of these drones in all 12 keys by visiting the store section of our website. Uh, you can download all of these. They're like three and a half minutes each, and you can start doing this kind of stuff at home with these drones. Okay, we will see you next week. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. Take it easy, everybody. Bye.